Why did Pope Benedict XVI resign the papacy on February 28th, 2013? This has been a big mystery for most of us, but we now have many more clues in the resignation of Pope Benedict XVI because of the testimony of Archbishop Vigano. Vigano was at ground zero when the Vatican Bank scandal broke out in 2010, 2011. This led to the Vatilink scandal and more scandals culminating in this 300 page dossier that was presented to Pope Ben XVI months before he resigned. And so Vigano has really opened this up and his role in this recent testimony isn't new. It actually goes back into his days with Benedict XVI in 2010, with this scandal at the Vatican Bank. So let's look at what the Vatican Bank is. Now, the Vatican Bank is officially known as the IOR, Institute for Works of Religion. IOR stands for the Latin Institutum Pro Auporibus Religionis. That's the Institute of Works of Religion. Now, in newspapers and in news, they call it the Vatican Bank. I'm going to use the term Vatican Bank and IOR interchangeably. They refer to the same institute. Now, the IOR was founded in 1942 by Pope Pius XII. So it's a new institute. It's recent, within the last 100 years. And what's interesting about the IOR is it's not the property of the Holy See. It remains outside the jurisdiction of the prefecture for the economic affairs of the Holy See. This makes it independent, and therefore many people have conspiracies about what it is and how it works. Now, the IOR is governed by a commission of five cardinals and a lay board of superintendents. Now, let's look at the scandal of the IOR, the Vatican Bank, going back to the year 2009. In 2009, Archbishop Carlo Maria Vigano, the same Vigano who released the 11-page document accusing cardinals and, yes, even Pope Francis himself, in 2009, he was appointed by Pope Benedict to the Secretary General of the Vatican City Governorate. This elevated Vigano to be the second-ranked Vatican administrator to Pope Benedict XVI, second to the Secretary of State. Now, from 2009 to 2010, under Vigano's leadership, the Vatican City went from a 10.5 million negative deficit to a 44 million positive surplus under Vigano's supervision. How did that happen? Was Vigano really good at the stock market? No. It seems that this $54 million swing into the black, into the positive, was in fact not great investing, but the consolidating of hidden funds. Hidden funds that were being used all over the place in Vatican City without oversight, off the books, not audited, not being accounted. And so it seems that Vigano and those with him consolidated all of these accounts and put them into one place to be seen. And so suddenly, the Vatican City went from a negative 10.5 million deficit to a $44 million surplus. $54 million, the equivalent of U.S. dollars, suddenly appeared in the Vatican checking account. Now, not surprisingly, in September of 2010, that same year, the Italian government seized 23 million euros from the Vatican Bank, from the IOR, and alleged that there was money laundering conspiracy going on with the IOR. It fell under the anti-money laundering laws of Italy. About six months after the money was seized, on March 27, 2011, Archbishop Vigano, the same Vigano, addressed a letter to Pope Benedict XVI describing the financial corruption in the Vatican Bank, the IOR. Then, a few months later, on May 8, 2011, Archbishop Vigano addressed a second letter, this time to the Cardinal Secretary of the State, again, describing financial corruption in the Vatican Bank. Now, just a few weeks later, Rome's Attorney General released the 23 million euros, those assets, back into the Vatican Bank. So, the charges of money laundering were dismissed or taken care of somehow. A few months after that, on August 13th, 
2011, Pope Benedict XVI removes Vigano from within the Secretariat of State and instead appoints him as Papal Nuncio to the United States of America, where he will live in Washington, D.C., next to Cardinal McCarrick and Cardinal Wuerl. Now, Reuters reported that Vigano was unwilling to take this assignment, but Benedict XVI insisted, and so Vigano said yes. Why did Pope Benedict do this? Well, it seems that Pope Benedict knew that he could trust him to go and make an honest investigation into the alleged corruption of the infamous Cardinal McCarrick. We now know that because of the 11-page testimony that Vigano released. Again, now with this new document, if it's true, these stray ends are coming together and being wrapped up. So, these cardinals and secretaries of the Vatican State issued this statement directly against Vigano, and they call Vigano a liar. So, was Vigano a liar? Was there corruption at the IOR, the Vatican Bank, or was there not? Well, just a few months after this happened, in May 2012, a journalist, Gianluigi Nuzzi, published a book called His Holiness, The Secret Papers of Pope Benedict XVI. This is the controversy known as Vatalinx, or it's like Wikilinks, but it's the Vatican, the Vatalinx scandal. And this book included letters by none other than Archbishop Vigano. Just a few days later, on May 23, 2012, the Pope's butler, Paolo Gabriele, was arrested by Vatican police, not Italian police, but by the police force of Vatican City itself. And the next day he was charged. And on the very next day, May 24, 2012, the head of the Vatican Bank was fired. So they arrested the butler, and then the next day they fired the head of the Vatican Bank. That head or president of the Vatican Bank was Ettore Gotti Tadashi. And the reason given was, quote, failure to provide any formal explanation for the dissemination of documents last known to be in the president's possession. A couple months later, August 13, 2012, Pope Benedict's butler Paolo Gabrielli was indicted by Vatican magistrates for aggravated theft. On October 6, the butler Paolo Gabrielli was found guilty of theft and was sentenced to a reduced sentence of 18 months inside the Vatican. And usually these punishments are not in a dungeon in the Vatican. They're living in Vatican City under house arrest. And on December 22nd, 2012, interestingly enough, Pope Benedict XVI pardoned his butler, Paolo Gabriele. So Paolo the butler receives papal pardon. Now, while all of this is going on, the Vatalinx, Pope Benedict XVI is unnerved and he commissions an investigation. He chooses three of his most trusted cardinals to do an investigation on the irregularities of the Vatican Bank and to find out who these people are. And these three cardinals were Cardinal Horans. He's a Spanish cardinal. He's a member of Opus Dei and he served as the chair of this investigation committee. Also, Cardinal Joseph Tomko, he's Slovak, and he's by ritual. He serves in the Roman Rite and the Eastern Churches, I think the Byzantine uh, jurisdiction, but I'm not quite sure on that. And then also Salvatore de Giorgi, who's an Italian. These three men did a secret investigation for Pope Benedict XVI. They prepared a 300-page dossier inside of a red binder and presented it to Pope Benedict XVI on December 17, 2012. This red binder with 300 pages in it documented financial corruption, but also deep moral corruption, allegedly describing Vatican hierarchs and cardinals dressed in drag with lewd details about them given by Roman male prostitutes. And so at this point, it becomes clear to Pope Benedict that the financial irregularities are also related to moral irregularities related to homosexuality inside the walls of Vatican City. By the way, December 17th, the day he receives this red binder dossier and reads it, is the day reportedly 
that Pope Benedict XVI realized, I am not up for this challenge. I'm going to resign. Just to make a connection, the binder was given on December 17th, 2012. It was on December 22nd, five days later, that Pope Benedict pardoned his butler, Paulo. And this has led some, including myself, to wonder, perhaps the leak was on purpose. Why would the butler do all this if he's a very close friend to Ratzinger Benedict and then go through the whole process of a trial and then get pardoned within days of this binder by Benedict XVI? It's a little unclear, but something's going on there as well. Now, just a couple weeks after he receives the binder and reportedly decides to resign, pressure is placed upon him. On January 1st, 2013, the ATM machines inside Vatican City, these are the machines that people who work there use to get cash, to get money, they cease to work. And all the Vatican bank accounts are reportedly closed, so much so that the Sistine Chapel, the Vatican Museums, can only accept cash because the systems are down. On February 11th, so a month and 11 days later, Pope Benedict XVI announces publicly that he is going to resign the papacy. The very next day, on February 12th, 2013, a Swiss company called the Aduno Group takes over the operation of the Vatican ATM cash machine. And by doing so, circumvents the Italian and EU regulatory pressures. On February 28th, Pope Benedict officially resigned the papacy and we entered into an interregnum. On March 13th, 2013, Pope Francis was elected by the College of Cardinals. What's interesting is just a few months after the election of Pope Francis, in June 2013, the money laundering case against the ex-head of the Vatican Bank, Goto Tedeschi, was dropped. And around the same time, Pope Francis appointed Monsignor Battista Mario Salvatore Rica as the interim head for the Vatican Bank. So why did Pope Benedict XVI resign? Well, going back to 2009-2010, there's a shakeup in the Holy See with the Vatican Bank. And who is right there in the middle at the bullseye? Vigano. Vigano is the one that's shaking things up, and it leads to secular intervention and an accusation of money laundering. The head of the Vatican Bank ends up getting fired. Vigano ends up being pulled out of the Secretary of State and sent over to the United States of America. But $54 million have come into the Vatican Bank, and there's a lot of questions. And the Vatilinx begins to break that open. And that, in turn, leads to Benedict discovering the moral rot of sexual deviancy within the walls of the Vatican, something he may have suspected or not, but becomes clear when those three cardinals present the 300-page binder onto his desk. So really, it was a four-punch knockout. First off, Vigano blows the whistle on alleged money laundering. Two, the accusation of money laundering leads to the Vatilinx scandal. Three, the Vatilinx scandal leads Benedict to form a secret investigation with three cardinals. And then four, those three cardinals expose moral rot, sexual deviancy that's been paired up with financial irregularity. This is what moves the Pope to resignation. And just to make sure there's enough pressure on him to actually do it and to do it quick, something funny goes on with the Vatican banks beginning on January 1st, 2013. And it seems that the powerful cardinals, the powerful hierarchs within Vatican City wanted it to happen fast because they don't want the contents of that 300-page dossier released to the public because there is moral scandal in those pages. Now, that binder was left for the successor of Benedict, who is Pope Francis, but nothing has been done. And what we've seen in the years to follow is that those who were opposed to Benedict XVI, theologically, but also on administration, have been reinstalled, reinstated, and promoted. Vigano says, 
that Bennett XVI put sanctions on Cardinal McCarrick in Washington, D.C., and that Pope Francis reversed them. If that's the case, we can see that within the walls of Vatican City, not just cardinals working secretly, but Pope Francis himself has been undermining the investigation that was prompted by Vigano as far back as 2010. So where do we stand now? Well, we have this 11-page document that Vigano has released to the public, and it connects the dots morally. He doesn't go into the financial. A lot of that stuff is already out in the public, though no one knows about it. But if you, if you go back into the Vatilink story, you're going to see Vigano is all over it. Could Vigano be lying? He could be. And if so, all this falls apart. It could just be that he's been a troublemaker from the very beginning. But if he's telling the truth and other Vatican officials and other cardinals come forward and attest to what Vigano has been telling us, then this pontificate of Pope Francis is in big, big trouble. So there it is. Archbishop Vigano and the resignation of Pope Benedict XVI. If this has helped you get some clarity or connect the dots, please like it, share it, subscribe to this channel. But more importantly, pray the rosary. Go to confession. Draw near to the sacred heart of Jesus. Do not lose faith. Do not lose charity. Do not give in to hate. Use this as a time to offer up great sacrifice. Because if these things are true, we are in a very difficult epic of Catholic Church history. Again, thanks so much for watching. God bless you. See you in a future video.